Camila Cabello was positioned as the breakout star of Fifth Harmony pretty much since they were a rookie act on The X Factor. And in many respects, she has been. She's had multiple hits, she's been a judge on The Voice, she also has multiple albums under her belt. Being the first one to leave the group, she took full advantage of opportunities and press given to her. She also had hits as a solo artist while she was still in the group, which ultimately was a very smart marketing tactic. Demi Lovato pointed out how Camilla stole the show during onstage performances on The X Factor, and things seem to be up for her since then. But that's not to say the other girls weren't talented or worthy of the spotlight. All the girls from Fifth Harmony are individually talented. Their claim to fame was a singing competition show. Of course they're all talented. But it could be said that they didn't all get a chance or fair opportunity to embrace the spotlight in the group. Which is quite common for groups. Ultimately, someone in the group will get more attention and more of the spotlight. And that's just the price that you pay for being in a pop group. But recently, Dinah Jane has talked about her experience and being left off of two pivotal singles for the group in an interview with Zach Sang, going on to say, I feel like being in a group that you also had to tuck a piece of yourself away, tuck a piece of your talent away, just to get an inch of something. I mean, I missed out on two singles, our first two singles ever, and I didn't realize, I didn't understand it at the time. I missed out on Boss, I missed out on Sledgehammer. I'm not on the record, I mean, I may be like on the harmonies in the backgrounds, but there was like no part that I had, except visually. I'm like, you better make sure I'm still in there. She then added, I missed out on those two, and then I think some of us girls had a fair share of not getting enough light on our voices. But for me, I mean, there was a moment where I was told that my voice was too soulful, it is too strong, it is too powerful. You're a powerhouse, but we need you to bring it down a notch. So I would kind of learn from the other girls, okay? So how are these girls getting on these records? She then says she would make her voice brighter and take a more pop approach. But in the midst of that, she felt that she was losing herself and what makes Dinah Jane, Dinah Jane. She says she then compensated for being left off the records by making sure to show off her vocals during live shows. It's kind of a big deal to be left off for your debut single. Which reminds me of Posh Spice and how she was the only member to not have a verse in the iconic Spice Girls single Wannabe. The same can be said for Lauren, who never got a part in one of the group's biggest singles, Worth It. But the experience also isn't unique to Dinah and Lauren. Normani has also been outspoken about not being able to sing lead on a lot of the songs. I didn't get to really sing in the group. I felt like I was overlooked, she said. That idea has been projected on me, like this is your place. And by this is your place, she means she was given a certain role in the group and felt that she couldn't step away from it. Ali Brooke also said that she didn't enjoy her time in Fifth Harmony. And that's kind of the downside to these groups. No matter how much these groups sing about empowerment, chances are it's not really happening behind the scenes. But I also want to make clear some songs are better suited for other voices. Not everyone deserves lead on every song because their tone might not be fit for it. And I feel that can apply for any member of a group, and even the main singer in Fifth Harmony's case. Although Fifth Harmony didn't have an official lead singer, I have to clarify that because fans of groups get upset when you claim a group has a lead singer if it's not a Beyonce or Nicole Scherzinger designated lead singer type of role. But I do feel it's pretty much undeniable that Camilla got a lot of the spotlight in Fifth Harmony and most of the lead parts on singles, which isn't her fault, but when you look at a group like Fifth Harmony and the individual talent in all of them, it might have been nice to see how the group fared if other members of the group also got to soak up more of the spotlight, especially vocally, because Camila Cabello's voice is an acquired taste, but I also think it aided to her getting more of a push. Generally in pop groups, the singer who takes main precedence over the group isn't always the most technically sufficient singer, but the most distinctive singer that helps the group stand out. Like for instance, T-Boss and TLC, Diana Ross and The Supremes, they have easily identifiable tones. In Camila Cabello's case, Fifth Harmony was also geared towards young people. They even had promotion on stations like Disney Channel. And Camila's high-pitched chipmunk-like vocals mesh well with the aesthetics and style of Bubblegum and Teen Pop. She has a very youthful voice. Think young Britney Spears and how she bulldozed to the top of the game with her distinctive tone as well. 
To Camilla's credit, she also did genuinely have a lot of presence in early Fifth Harmony days as well. The handlers behind Fifth Harmony weren't necessarily fair to the ladies, but unfortunately, that's par for the course for most groups. And while Fifth Harmony was a nice launching pad, I do think their talents and weaknesses are more clear as solo acts. And although I don't feel a sense of strong sisterhood or authentic natural charisma with the members of the group, I will say I think their final self-titled album without Camilla had some nice complimentary vocal work from the other ladies.